Welcome to the Sunshine Parenting Podcast. My name is Audrey Monkey, and I am your host. At Sunshine Parenting, I write, research, speak, and interview podcast guests on the topics of parenting, summer camp, and happiness. In episode 15, I'm talking with my good friend Sarah Kulius, and our topic is parents who are great to work with. This podcast is an audio version of the Facebook Live interview I did with Sarah. If you'd like to watch the video version, you can visit my website at sunshine-parenting.com or my Facebook page at Sunshine Parenting. I hope you enjoy our interview. So for this Facebook Live, just a spur of the moment one, unscheduled, I'm with my good friend, Sarah Coolius, who's a fellow camp director. And we're just going to be talking to each other today about traits of parents who are really great to work with. So welcome Thank to you. my FaceTime Live on Sunshine Parenting, It's Sarah. very fun to be here. <laughs> so um, we've just talked a lot over the years about um, just in our work with the kids at camp, um, how certain parents... Parents are just really awesome to work with. So um, do you want to just share maybe one of the things that you really like about parents who are especially awesome to work with? Sure. Well, I think it's one of my favorite parts of our job is getting to form these really um, positive and um, effective and fun partnerships with parents. And I can look at all those that I feel closest to and energized by. And one of their common traits is they understand that children grow through challenge. They understand that human beings are wired to see um, a challenge or a task and then want to work at accomplishing it. And they see that uh, that's where real esteem comes from. Mm. So these parents are not afraid of, you know, a child having to try, try again, or maybe Mm. going to camp um, not knowing anybody Mm. because they get to try and succeed at making a new friend all on their own. And I love when parents understand that camp is this perfect setting Mm. to um, um, take on um, age appropriate challenges Mm. and learn and grow in that way, rather than us as grownups, sometimes um, protecting them so much that their growth is stunted. Oh my gosh. Yes, I agree a hundred percent. It's interesting too, that thing you just mentioned, um, I don't think I've ever had the conversation with you, but you might have that same experience of parents who will say, oh, I can't find a friend Mm -hmm. for my child to come to camp with. So, you know, he's not going to come to camp maybe next year if we can find a friend. And um, I don't know if you have the same thing, but when when you have a parent say that. Um, what do you like to tell them about kind of whether a child needs to have like the first time they come to camp, sure. um, whether they need to have a buddy with them? Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you tell parents? I'm just curious if it's the same thing that I share with them. Well, it, it likely is common. Um, and it would be the same as any coach who might be welcoming a new player on their team mm-hmm. or a teacher welcoming a new student into class. Um, if I tell parents, if we do our job well, We have trained the staff to be watchful and ready and equip kids to make friends. And we will create spaces immediately for them to be able to make a new friend within the hour that they arrive. Mm -hmm. And by the end of day two, they will feel that they very, very much belong and are valued in their cabin. And I named some of those activities. I know you guys are utterly intentional as well in helping Mm -hmm. them connect. And ultimately, that grows to the conversation of, will you trust us? Because we're committed to your mm-hmm. child connecting too, and then you know that's a that's a big leap of trust, right? And I think probably for some parents, they have experienced their child going to a new thing. I know mm-hmm. I've experienced it with my kids where that hasn't happened. Yeah, and so you do feel like, oh, I wish I had um, had a friend who could go to this mm-hmm. uh, team for the first oh, time absolutely. together. And so I understand mm-hmm. why parents coming from what would come from that perspective. Cause it feels like a comfort. Yes. Having that, that, you know, okay, mm-hmm. going into this, they have a buddy. They're not going to be lonely. Right. You know, they have that one connection. It's not going to be so scary, but I think oftentimes parents don't realize maybe all the things that mm-hmm. are put into place to help them connect right away. Sure. That's such a good point. You know, it's funny. We weren't even thinking about talking about this, but, <laughs> but this has come up. It actually came up just this week. Um, a friend of my husband's texted and said, Oh, we couldn't find a friend. Mm-hmm. For, you know, and this is like a college friend and just, oh. you know, it's just, it's too long of a thing to explain, especially via text. Right. How you don't need to know someone ahead of time. Right. For our kinds of camp programs. Right. 
Yes. And, um, and hopefully if we get our way in educating other people like mm-hmm. teachers and coaches, that connection should be the first thing. Absolutely. No first. matter what new thing is happening. Right. So that kids can always feel, you know, welcomed and like mm-hmm. they can make friends in all different settings. Yes. That. Yes. But that's a great thing in that, but that is uncomfortable even at a place like our camp, you know, for a parent to like put your child on the bus to camp. Mm-hmm when the parent doesn't know any of the other kids and right. your child, that is a scary thing. So that is a trait though, of just knowing that, that parents who know that that challenge is going to be good for their child. And some of those parents who say, wow, this will be a stretch for him or her. He's a, he's a little bit, um, you know, uh, quieter and maybe shy at first. And, um, and then when they ask, what can I do at home before he comes mm. and we role play, um, introducing yourself and looking mm. someone in the eye and, and kinds of questions to ask a new Mm. friend and parents can do a lot of equipping at home. Absolutely. um, Which I'm delighted to see. And there again, there's that great partnership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which leads to that. Another thought that you and I've talked about a lot, which talk about just sort of partnering, you Mm -hmm. know, like how, how we feel about sort of here are these parents trusting their kids with us. You know, how do we work with them? How does that relationship work really well for the benefit of the kids. Well, I think you said a key word and that is it's to the kids benefit when their parents, uh, we as parents work with their teacher well, work with their coach well, even their doctors, their neighbors, you know, their friends, parents well. And the same goes at camp, of course. So if we um, have a special question about maybe a behavioral issue going on with a camper and we have not been able to resolve that or shape that behavior well, I love when I can call a parent and say that your child is thriving in these ways. And here's one way that we're, we're having some speed bumps. These are the strategies we tried. Has this happened before? And what advice will you give us so your child will continue to be successful? And that when those parents will share ideas, I learned so much mm-hmm. from them. Mm-hmm. And they also, I hope, see that we are doing our darndest mm-hmm. to help that kiddo succeed. Um, it's a very different response than you know, maybe, um, some defensiveness or some fearfulness. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's on us to make sure we communicate. We have your, your child's best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And not make them feel like, I mean, I think you know the same thing. No kid is perfect. Oh, of course. And all of our kids have their quirks or, you know, special behaviors and parents obviously know their kids best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by sharing with us, Oh, you know, this is something that's been going on this year or what we've been finding at home. And here's what, you know, the teachers found helpful or what we found helpful. So, you know, I'm going to let the counselors know, you know, what parents, what about, how do you feel about parents who are really thorough in their forms? Oh, it's the greatest (laughs) gift. It's the greatest gift to tell us all about your kiddo and that personality profile. Yes. Well, and I think, you know, sometimes I think parents are hesitant. I mean, that's a lot to trust people you don't know Mm -hmm. with kind of personal, very personal and confidential information. And it's interesting to me and what we always tell our counselors. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you tell your counselors the same thing is when you have a child who has a very detailed, um, Mm -hmm. like ours are called camper profiles, Mm -hmm. it's called a personality profile. So, you know, instead of going, Oh my gosh, there must be a lot going on with this child because of all this information. I say to them, Oh, that kid will be fantastic because that's a child whose Mm -hmm. parents are really involved, know what's going on with them, Mm -hmm. know what, how to help them and succeed. And so by them providing us with this information, we get this step up when we haven't met the child yet, they arrive and we already know so much about them. Mm -hmm. Do you find the same thing? The people who have the most thorough. Exactly. And and they're the ones who want you to know their child before they come. Yeah. Isn't that great? Or they call us. There's that too. I'd rather talk than write. I, it. So, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I like that too. And it's so interesting because how many times have you had people like a lot of my calls when someone calls and says, I don't know how this is going to go at camp. Mm-hmm. I'll be able to say, Oh, you know what? We've had, yes. you know, many, many kids. This is what we tried at camp. Mm-hmm. This is what they, you know, and it's like this nice, that's that partnership thing right. where we can say, you know, in the past, um, children who've had similar things mm-hmm. going on, this has helped them. And sure. I think it also is reassuring to parents always to hear that they're not the only one. Oh, that always, gosh, the me, the power of me too, as we call it, you know, that's comforting. It's reassuring. Mm-hmm. Um, it gives courage. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's great to say the last time this happened or yesterday when right. this happened, right? Um, this is how yes. we approached yeah. it. And, you know, how can you, um, 
you know, even help us do that better. Right. Yeah. And do you also have parents sometimes who think like maybe their child shouldn't go to camp or isn't ready for camp who call? Oh, sure. The and readiness the- piece. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, you, I'm sure, experience the same thing. I think all of us as parents, is that is our child ready to try out for that elite team? Is our child ready to go on an airplane by himself to grandma's house? You know, we're always looking at their readiness. Mm-hmm. And um, gosh, we could do a whole podcast on that just by okay, itself. Well, that could be its own okay, thing. But do I do that. agree because mm-hmm. my theory is that no one's ever ready for something they've never done before. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I mean, in yes. a way, we can do things to help. Yes. You know how you can, like, mm-hmm. you can get ready for college by learning some skills you need. Sure. But you really, in all things, like when you get a new job, yeah. until you're, you're not there, re- yeah, right? Kind of. That's true. I don't know. But That's I mean, I true. think there's things we can do to help. Yeah. But, um, oh, but yeah. absolutely. So that'll be our next um, one. So I do appreciate, yeah. though, when a yeah. parent will say, um, my child is ready, but I am not. Mm. Um, and I love when we know the difference there. Right. Um, because right. that's a different conversation then and some different mm-hmm. readiness, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, activities that can be taken on, right. um, rather than always just saying, no, Michael's not ready. Michael's not ready. Oh, no. And I love the courage of the parent who says, I'm not ready. Michael really wants right. to be there, but I need one more year. Okay. Right. Well then let's use this year to learn more right. and practice releasing right. a little bit. Oh I, my gosh. I love I'll it. go anywhere yeah. with that parent. I agree. I like yeah. that when they're, when they're admitting it's actually not my child. Yeah. It's yeah. me. I'm scared. I don't, yeah. it's hard to like know that they might be uncomfortable or, sure. you know, and I, and, and I, I certainly have felt that way before right, with new experiences, right, you know, right, so for sure. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about some other things, um, that great traits of some of the great parents mm-hmm. that we've worked with. Remember this one? Oh though? yes. Yes. Um, I, um, so appreciate the parents, um, who understand that at some point to gain age appropriate and healthy independence, our kids have to start trying new things outside of our home and away from us. Um, when they're little, you're there for the first steps and the first tasting of peas that get spit out all over the <laughs> kitchen table and all those firsts. But pretty soon, a teenager or a, even an adolescent needs to know, I made a friend without my mom helping. Mm -hmm. I tried a new sport or climbed that wall without having to have dad close by. Mm -hmm. And what that builds in a young person or in all of us, is just invaluable. And, um, I once, um, but a few years back was talking with a potential camp mom and she was asking fabulous questions about camp. Mm -hmm. Um, her kids were interested in going and her husband really wanted them to go. And she finally said, you know what? I, I'm I'm not going to be able to have them go to camp because I have made a commitment that every time they do something new, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved that her heart was to show support and to enjoy that new learning with them. Mm -hmm. But at some point it, could possibly communicate to the child that you actually aren't capable Mm. of getting up on that wakeboard on your own or doing that backpack or trying that new food or making that new friend without mom there. Mm. And certainly um, we all probably know kids who are off at college who still call to check in on their outfit with their mom. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, you know, let's, you know, I, I want to be thoughtful with parents of when is the right time to let them Try Again, this. age appropriate yeah. challenge. Right. Um, have them try to do it. And so they get to say, Mom, mm-hmm. Dad, I did it. Right. right. So and I love I agree. So yeah, so parents who are willing to let their child have some of those mm-hmm. adventures and mm-hmm. experiences, whether it's camp or a school or other programs mm-hmm. or a sport, without the parent just right there. Right there. Because, and you're telling them how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That is I think that's a really that is an important thing. And I think it is hard because you do want to be there for the kids, I but know. I think sometimes kids aren't as brave Mm -hmm. when their parents are there. The few times that we've done like family weekends, Mm -hmm. we notice the difference of how kids act with their parents right there. It's almost like when their parents not there and we're like, do you want to try, you know, Mm -hmm. this ropes course? And they're like, um, yeah, I think I, you know, I might try it. Yes. The parents there that sometimes they look at their parent first. Oh, to see is this yeah, like, okay. Do you I think I should that? try? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like almost like should I try it? Mm-hmm. Or also, I feel like sometimes as parents, we are the kind of protective, mm-hmm. don't want them uncomfortable. So we tend to be that person that's kind of easy to stand next to and say, Oh, you know what? I don't think I want to try right now. Sure. I feel like kids, my my own kids I know have tried things 
often yeah. things that I wouldn't think they would do. Sure. Like for example, roller coasters or something like that. Like yeah. Maybe when you're with your parents, it's like, Oh, I don't, you know, mm-hmm. no, I'm too scared, but they're with some friends or they're with mm-hmm. them, you know, and they are like, okay, maybe I'll do this. You know, I don't know. I just, I do agree. And you don't want to miss stuff, but sometimes you almost have to miss stuff for the kids to get to, to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. and sometimes as parents and I have been, um, I've done this myself is we kind of put a label on our kids. Oh, that child won't do that climbing wall because she's my cautious one or, Oh no, he'll never be in a skit because he's not the theatrical one. Well, do you know what? I turn around and there she is up that wall and there he is on that right. stage. Right. And um, sometimes our labels that we give kids that feel benign mm-hmm. actually keep our kids from dabbling and trying new things and seeing who else they are. Mm-hmm. So that's another gift of, a, a sleep away experience. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And so then the last thing, which was funny, because when we talked about this mm-hmm. topic, it was actually um, the kind of the first thing that came up in my mind, but you thought of so many other things. And I think we a little bit covered it, but it's just that whole um, kind of just that relationship that we get with these parents, mm-hmm. especially when maybe something isn't going well right. at camp. So let's talk about that. Like parents who, you know, when something's going on, maybe a behavioral thing, maybe mm-hmm. extreme homesickness, mm-hmm. whatever it is, what are the the traits or the things that parents have done that just make it really, really great to work with them? Oh, I think it goes back to that trust piece. Um, when we've developed enough trust to say, to call and say, you know, um, you know, Lori's experiencing, say, homesickness. These are the strategies we've tried. She is 90% there. You should be so proud. Here's some stories about that. And, um, but she's not all the way there yet. Um, tell us more. What else can we do? And when they will, um, really partner, like we're mm-hmm. really working together. This is teamwork mm-hmm. to help Lori succeed. Mm -hmm. Um, then we both that parent as well as our staff get Mm -hmm. to celebrate together. It's one of the funnest things about camp is, um, having the privilege really of partnering with parents in that way. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we also have a lot to learn from parents. We, we are not the expert on every child, right? They are. Yeah. That's what we need them to be partnered with us. And so that I know I can rely on them and say, Hey, uh, you got any more ideas? How can we do this better? Yeah. Well, this has been so much fun. So um, we both really think um, that these same strategies um, that make parents really great, great to work with mm-hmm. at summer camp are the same things that I think coaches and teachers might appreciate as well. And we'd love to hear your comments and mm-hmm. questions um, on this topic and just see what your thoughts are. But I, we will definitely do it again. It sounds like our next topic might be about readiness for future mm-hmm. things. But thank you so much for um, watching or listening to this podcast or Facebook Live. We appreciate you being with us and we'll see you next time. Thanks for having me. Sure, it was so fun. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. I had so much fun talking with Sarah, and I look forward to interviewing her again soon on other topics. For notes and more information about this episode, visit sunshine-parenting and search for episode 15. Thank you for listening. This week's quote comes from Sarah herself and resonates with me a lot. She says, I think it's one of my favorite parts of my job, getting to form these really positive, effective, and fun partnerships with parents. Mm -hmm.